Hey Global Game Jam, I'm Will Goldstone from Unity and I've been with Unity for a long time. Since 2011, that's maybe too long. Anyway, many things have changed in the games industry since then, but one thing that doesn't change that's really, really cool that I love is that every year there's even more games to play made by many creators just like yourselves. At Unity, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it and the Global Game Jam offers creativity in its purest form. It's a time and a place where people can come together and make something real. New creators can learn to make their very first game, and experienced folks like many of you can learn a new skill or simply try out an idea that you haven't had time for before. If you choose Unity for your project, aside from our incredible community of people there to back you up, there's also our Discord server, where we have a dedicated channel full of resources to help you along with Global Game Jam. So enough waffle from me, Go and make something that you love, because that's all that really matters. Hi, I'm Kate Edwards. I'm the executive director of the Global Game Jam. And whether you're new to the Global Game Jam or you're a veteran of the event, I would like to welcome you aboard to Global Game Jam 2022. You know, it's been another year of ups and downs and starts and stops, but our collective passion for games and game creation has persisted because here we are once again, ready to take part in the world's largest game creation event. And so, you know, every event has faced challenges during the pandemic. The Global Game Jam is certainly not alone in that. Like many other events, we've had to learn how to pivot and keep evolving and how we organize and how we deliver the event. But, you know, I'm frankly just super excited that we're here and that we're still able to do this um, in whatever format you happen to be in. You know, the Global Game Jam's mission is to empower individuals worldwide to learn, experiment, and create together through the medium of games. And to that end, I would love to thank and appreciate all of our sponsors who generously support this mission. And obviously a huge thank you to our amazing volunteers whose talent makes Global Game Jam possible the executive committee, the regional organizers, the site organizers, the streamers, everybody who lends a hand to help out, no matter if you're in a live site, a virtual site, a hybrid site, any of you have who have volunteered any time whatsoever, thank you so much because truly this wouldn't happen without you. And I think what's great about it is it represents the biggest power of Global Game Jam, which is about you, the community. So we are so glad that you're joining us whether you're at a live site or virtual or hybrid, whatever the format you're doing this year, thank you so much for choosing to be a part of this community and thank you for supporting each other as we all hope for better times in 2023 and beyond. So I ask you to stay vigilant, stay safe. We hope you have a fantastic Global Game Jam and we cannot wait to see the amazing games you're going to create this year. Thank you.
Hello, Brave Game Jammer. I'm Tanya X Short, the captain of Kitbox Games. And I love jams because we can make whatever we want, right? We don't have to do market research. I don't have to pitch anybody well, other than my collaborators. I don't have to have a budget. Um, it's just me and these people I love working with and we make whatever is exciting to us. You get into the flow of creative collaboration and, and that's probably the best feeling when it works. So here it goes, my advice, solid advice, uh, my, my tricks to winning the game jam in your heart. Um, one, know what your goal is. Are you learning something new? Are you innovating? Are you making something really polished? Um, decide very explicitly before you start what kind of thing you want to do, like why you're doing this, and talk about it with your team if you have one. Um, you know, sometimes I see myself as a brave warrior or a, a cutting edge scientist or an um, insightful artist. Um, and really you're all of those things when you're game jamming because you're doing something really brave. You're making something new and you're putting yourself out there and you're doing it semi-publicly if you're with Global Game Jam. So, so good job on that. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you follow the patented Tanya X Short <laughs> Game Jam timeline um, that I've used for many, many years. And it's very, very helpful, um, which uh, helps with scope without doing too much uh, you know, project management details. On day one, you and your team solidify what are you making and you get the project and the version control all set up. And then, you know, if you can, the stretch goal for the first day is to get that first little interaction working. Day two, um, you make the game playable from start to finish in a basic way. On day three, it's, it's much easier to just have polish and bug fixing and maybe adding a little more content here and there, um, start menu, credits, sound effects, particle effects, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, 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 one more thing. I do find that I do my best work when I've slept well and I've eaten well. But I'm not going to judge you if you decide not to. I mean, each person has their own preferred workflow. Just please make sure you're not a jerk to your teammates or your loved ones or family. Um, as a result, you know, don't if you're taking it out on them is not cool. So and, and keep in mind, if you overwork, you might feel resentful that other people don't overwork. So maybe it's just easiest to like take it easy, get a lot of sleep, do your best work. But you know, you're going to do what you do. The important thing is that I, I believe in you. I really do. I don't know you probably, but I'm always inspired seeing what people make for, for every game jam, but especially global game jam. I love that it's across the world and I love that everybody has their own experiences and their own inspirations. I, I hope you're proud of what you make and that this act of creation teaches you something new about yourself. Look inside yourself and ask what you have to say. It's, it's a new year for better or worse. And it's a new jam, and we have a new opportunity to be joyful. So, good luck. Hi, I'm Chase with Thea. I'm a professional freelance composer, technical audio designer for video games. And it's an honor to welcome you to the 2022 Global Game Jam. You may not realize it right now, but the jam you're about to take part in is about to change your life in some kind of good way, even if you're a returning jammer. You don't have time to build the perfect game, but you do have time to experiment and test a lot. The game will tell you what it likes and what it doesn't. It has a pulse, a flow, a feel, rhythm. Game Jams is not about crunch. It's about learning your limits Yes, you have a brief amount of time to make something, but you only put the pressure you have upon yourself. You should be entering the jam with the goal of making a fun experience with friends in hopes other friends will enjoy. It's okay to be competitive, but there is a line. This isn't the time to learn about how to burn out, but to practice pacing, strengthen communication and critical listening skills, and quality assurance with assets for context. This is where you learn so many things. If you're thinking about making game development a career, you can take this opportunity to see what goes into making one. At the end of the jam, you'll be able to assess if you wish to pursue it or have it be a hobby. Game jams should be perceived to build the best starting point. Create to play. 
And if you get more done, or even finish the game your team set out to make, then that's icing on the cake. Game jams make opportunities. Over the years, we've seen so many successful game titles that were born from global game jam, such as Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes and How To Do It, and more. Some games have spawned successful gaming studios. Those studios have created jobs for people that want to get their start in the gaming industry, earn a living, build a career, and do what they love to do, make games. I owe most of my career to game jams. If it wasn't for these, I would have struggled a lot more to get a portfolio started and even get work in the industry. I still game jam to this day because it's the best way to tap into my childhood creativity. Remember, to keep the fun alive, keep your mind open and ideas will flow naturally. Lose yourself in the jam. Be kind, stay hydrated and rested. Make stuff. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to get started. And once it does, it'll have a pulse, a rhythm, and a flow. And off you go. Have a great jam session. Hi everyone, my name is Elaine Gomez. I am a game designer at Brass Lion Entertainment, which is a studio focused on creating worlds that center on black, brown, and other marginalized characters, cultures, and stories. I'm also proud to be one of the six co-founders of Latinx in Gaming and give developer-related support to the organization's many activations. I really wanted to share my short message with you all without reading my notes, but I don't want to screw it up, so please pardon me as I read along. I've had the privilege to be able to build my career around things that I stand up for and I'm passionate about. I'm so honored to have a few minutes to share a short message with you, and I want to thank Tim Collins and the Global Game Jam team for giving me this opportunity. I thought quite long and hard about what to share. Um, there are so many things to touch on, like not overscoping, not forgetting to eat and staying hydrated, stepping away from the computer and getting moving, or not burning yourself out and taking care of your mental health. But instead of telling you things you shouldn't do, I wanted to focus on something I think you should do, and that is to grow. Challenging yourself in a way to make this global game gem an experience to look back on and to be proud of something that you were able to accomplish that you normally wouldn't be able to do. Growing can take many forms, and it is especially does not mean perfection. If you take on something that you've always wanted to learn or wanted to do, and it's your first time doing it, cut yourself some slack. Give yourself some grace. There is room for failure because failing is not a bad thing. Your art may not be beautiful, your scripting may not be clean, your designs may not be super polished, but it's functional and that is something to be excited about. This is one of the things that I love about designing in game jams. You have limitations and finding ways to use them to your advantage can really make for interesting problem solving. And growing doesn't just apply to development, it also applies to social skills. It can be uncomfortable to work with people you don't know and working on a team with several people when you're used to working on, on your own. Find something that works for you and that is best for you, but use the internet to your advantage to make communication easier. I encourage you all to create something you've never made before, something out of your comfort zone. If it's a new genre, a type of mechanic that you normally wouldn't, type of story that you have not been able to tell, go for it. Maybe you'll be surprised to find something new to enjoy about making games. What I'm saying may sound like cliche, happy-go-lucky message, but the reality is that growing is difficult. It's not comfortable. You will get frustrated, and sometimes the thing that you're trying to make is just not going to work for the time that you have. If you catch yourself spending too much time on something, Take a step back, regroup, and find an alternative that will work for you and your team. Good luck, have fun, and enjoy this year's Global Game Jam. Bye!